Hi, uh, welcome to day one of ENS for Ash and Faye's babies. They are three days old today, so this is the first day we'll be doing the ENS. And we're going to weigh them as well because we're creating a growth chart um, that when we have a few more days to collect, we'll be able to show you uh, their growth and development. So we'll start with, oh, little Mr. Gray here because he's right by my hand. Um, we've trimmed their toenails this morning um, so we we can make it more comfortable for Mum Faye who's just gone out for a walk with Dad. And Mr Grey weighs 450 grams today. Very good Mr Grey. I'm going to do five seconds of head up and five seconds of head down and five seconds on his back good boy and we're going to do five seconds on the cold flannel okay and then we're just going to tickle between his toes with the q-tip He's not looking at the camera. <laughs> All right, got you back. Bring the Mr. Blue Collar Boy. We'll see what he weighs. These are human baby scales, by the way. Very handy for weighing puppies. Okay. He's oh, a bit wriggly. <laughs> He's 550 grams today. So we'll do five seconds of head up. Oh no. And five seconds of head down. And five seconds on his back. Oh no. Oh no, you got this horrible bit. Five seconds on the cold towel. Okay, and five seconds of tickling your toes, sir. Oh no, what a lovely little grumble. Oh. So this is Mr. Blue. Oh, yeah. Plenty of strong opinions today. I oh, know, yeah. come on. And ten for you. Come on, Mr. Bat. Okay, <clears throat> Mr. Black, and he weighs 500 You're all wriggly, Mr. Black weighs 500 grams today. Okay, we're going to do five seconds of head up and five seconds of head down. Five seconds on his back. Two, three, five. Five seconds on the cool towel. Five and five. A few, well, five seconds of tickling feet, but a few seconds of tickling between toes. Pick a few different toes. I know. Good boy. Right. Well done. All right. So that's the three boys done. Oh, we'll start with the girls. We'll start with Miss Yellow. Okay, Miss Yellow. Get you on the scales. No. These puppies are... She's about 400 grams today, maybe just a little under. She's not very still. We might count that as, as 395, Miss Yellow. Okay, head up for five. 
head down for five. On her back for five. Oh yeah, she And on the cold foil for five. Five, okay. And tickle her toes with the Q-tip. Just a few seconds. You can count to fives on if you want. What we're doing is letting her brain know where her feet are. There we go. She's usually a very calm, sweet little, sweet little creature. Right. We'll go with Miss Pink. Miss Baby Pink here. Lovely little duck she is. Let's get you weighed. The girl's all a little bit lighter than the boys in weight. Quite normal. Oh, oh you're going to protest. 400 for her too. <laughs> Nearly lost you there. Yeah, 400 for Miss Pink. Head up for five seconds. Head down for five seconds. On their back for five seconds. And then on the cold flannel. There we go, and we'll do some foot tickling with the Q-tip. Now, these guys all had a, a natural, easy birth. He was a really good mum. So there was no, no undue or excessive stress during their birth. So we're starting ENS on day three, which is the normal regime. Let's pick Miss Purple. But you might want to start on day four or five if you had a, a, a puppy with stressful births. Um, you might want to start even later if they were a C-section delivery. Or if you have, uh, we don't have them here, but if your puppies have rear dew claws and you're having those removed, or if you know the puppies had to have um, some antibiotics or been unwell at the early stages, then you want to leave the ENS, uh, the early neurological stimulation, until later. Um, you don't have to start on day three. Um, because these were born naturally and they're all strong and healthy, um, we don't have to do any duclaw removal or, or have anything that would cause them any stress. Um, we're just going to carry on from, with day three as our first day. Uh, these are all strong, but um, if you are worried about any of your puppies, uh, or you feel that they've been under any excessive stress, uh, again, 395, I would say, for Miss Purple there, and Grams, then you um, you probably do want to leave VNS until a little bit later um, and start it at a later day. Um, you might not want to do it at all if your puppies have had a lot of stress during their birth or in the early days, because all we're doing in ENS is providing a little bit of stress so that biologically and neurologically they are already learning to deal with stress but if your puppies are already stressed there is no need to overstress a puppy in fact obviously overstressing a puppy can be quite detrimental so we are down to we've got our Second to last girl, Miss Red. Here she is. Now, Miss Red was a little bit smaller at birth than her sister, so let's see today. Oh. Oh, such a wiggle, it's hard to say. Right, no, 395 as well. <laughs> right. So now all the girls um, have all sort of evened out in their weight. They're all around the 395, 400 gram mark. Um, people will often say to me that they, they seem small, uh, even though they, they kind of look quite big, but they, they weigh probably less than a sled dog puppy of equivalent age. Um, the reason for that being um, that actually Skeletally, uh, wolf dogs generally weigh less than their sled dog and shepherd dog counterparts. Um, although the skeleton is bigger, 
it is less dense in its um, shape. It's often doesn't. It's not as often not as heavy. The bones of sled dogs um, tend to be heavier, particularly Malamutes um, and dogs that are designed to to pull um, or weight pull uh, tend to have a, a heavier body than a wolf dog. So actually, sort of four. 400 grams day three is perfectly normal and doesn't really have any particular bearing um, on their adult weight, I have to say. Um, some of our smallest puppies um, at birth and in the early weeks have gone on to become our biggest adult dogs. Um, so this is just to make sure that everybody's feeding well and that everybody is progressing. We don't care how much... Um, you know, weight they're gaining particularly as long as it's within the sort of ranges of the litter so it's they're keeping up with their siblings and their litter mates and that they're all receiving uh, their fair share of the milk at the milk bar so this is our last girl uh, we're going to call this little miss little miss cerise blue uh, teal what what do we want to call this 400 grams there as well um, I think we'll go with teal. Uh, head up for five seconds. Head down for five seconds. On her back for five seconds. And on the panel for five seconds. Oh, 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 thank you. Okay. And we're going to tickle her toes. Uh, finally, I suppose the last thing to mention is uh, there are these these is a blue puppy these will be blue fawn I believe um, because the stomach is slightly creamer in color and also the way to tell is if you lift the tail at the back you'll see that it's lighter underneath um, you wouldn't necessarily see that if we were looking at a solid colored puppy at this stage so we would suggest this will be blue fawn or or even blue over um, you know, a gooty. So we, we we tend to call that blue fawn in the wolf dog community. Uh, that's okay, whatever you want to call it. I don't think any of these puppies are solid blue. Um, and the, we have two uh, blue boys, one blue girl, and we have uh, one grey, wolf grey boy, and we have four wolf grey girls. Um, Faye, mum, is carrying uh, the traditional dilute blue that we see on our Embark results, which would be D1, so dilute 1. Uh, Dad, Ash, isn't carrying the traditional dilute blue. Uh, he's carrying the one that we don't see on an Embark test, but we have tested for uh, privately with another company. Um, that's D2, and he is carrying dilute 2. So together the Dilute 1 from Faye and the Dilute 2 from Ash have uh, gave us some blue babies. Uh, we weren't really expecting to see any because both parents are obviously wolf grey, even though we knew they were carrying. Um, I, I don't know why I didn't expect. Uh, I know it was a possibility, but uh, I didn't expect to see it, to be honest, because there hasn't been any blue puppies uh, born particularly uh, behind the father's line for quite a long time. Um, he does, if you go quite a long way back on his side, um, on his mother's side, go a fair way back, you will find a Southern Breeze dog. So I suppose that's where it's carried down from, but um, we, weren't, we weren't expecting that. We, were, we had to double check that Ash was carrying that dilute too. Um, and that's it for today. I'm gonna, Mum's gone out for a walk with Dad, so we're going to let her back in. Uh, if you have any questions about ENS and about when you want to do it with your puppies or why would you do it with your puppies um, and if, if you feel your puppies may have had some stress in their early days and you want to talk about when would be an appropriate time to start ENS with your puppies or you know you're just not sure please leave questions in the comments I will try and answer everyone um, over the weekend and into the early part of next week. We'll do another one of these weigh-ins, uh, videoed weigh-ins next weekend so that we can see, we should by then have had several weights and we should be able to see some real progress. Fingers crossed, obviously, if everything carries on 
being uh, the way it is now, which is all going super well and normally. We obviously don't want anyone to, to fall behind, but this is how breeders find out and keep an eye on that. So what we do here is I weigh the puppies every other day because I'm happy and confident that this litter is progressing well and that mum's doing a really great job and that they're all healthy and strong. If you're not happy with that or you're unsure, then weighing every day is highly recommended as well. And you really just have to go off what's normal for your breed, what's normal uh, for your for your bitch and how she's getting on with her puppies and sort of looking, look, use your eyes. Don't just rely on the scales. Look at the strength of your puppies in the litter box, um, looking for them moving around, heat seeking. They should be heading towards, if there's a pile of puppies, they'll head towards each other. If mum is there, she'll be the major source of heat and they'll head from mum. Um, these little noises that you can hear, they're all good, healthy noises. You want to hear that. Um, if you've got a puppy that's, you know, if you've worried about in any way, regular weights, and then you can see what's happening. You can take that information to your veterinarian if you need to. Uh, we'll, we'll catch up next weekend. Thank you.